confident in the great outdoors. From the mess hall to the bathhouse, Camp Cass, all summer long. So don't just sleep the summer away. Report to camp on Nickelodeon Gas. Maddie, I'm looking for my sunblock. You seen it? I'm just over there, Viv. Okay, thanks. Viv, help me. Nickelodeon games and sports, the only place to be right now because we're going to have a nice little time. We're going to have ourselves a little party and play some us against them, girls against guys. Today we got some girls, track stars, the track and field team against the guys, the cross team. We're going to meet our players. We're going to tell you all about everything that's going to happen. But first, we're going to let you know what shows are coming up today. So take a look at this. Our first show is Guts, Attack This Lacrosse Game. And then Wild and Crazy Kids, Bumper Boat Lacrosse. Then more Guts, a track that's going horizontal. And then more Wild and Crazy Kids, the track and field meet. We go from a track and field meet to meeting our track and field superstars. You like that little segue there? Yeah. Alicia's in the house. Courtney is next to her. And right here, Lashantis. Now, what we want to do, Lashantis, is we want to know from you. Why your team is going to win? What is so special about this team that's going to just make you guys dominate the guys over there? Well, losing, losing is an uh, option. Losing is not an option. The only option is to win. All right. All right. All right. Very good. Well, we'll see what the guys have to say about that because we got Jason down there. We got Mike in the middle. And next to me is the man that they call Blaine. They call him that because that's his name, obviously. Yeah. All right, Blaine. You heard what they said. Losing is not an option. What do you have to say about that? We're colder. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Remains to be seen. Four challenges. Two of them are physical challenges. Two of them are trivia challenges. One physical challenge is going to be a track and field challenge. One physical challenge is going to be a lacrosse challenge. We're going to see what happens. Whoever wins this whole thing, well, they're going to get this grand prize package right here. Take a look. Today's teams are competing for movie tickets for you and a friend to Regal Cinemas, admission to Wet n Wild, day passes to a Gui Rock Climbing Center, and a games and sports gift package. So now we know what's at stake. We know what they're playing for, and they're all excited for a chance to get it. When we come back, we're going to start this thing, play our first round. But in the meantime, we're going to watch a little lacrosse on Nickelodeon Guts, and then come on back for round one of Us Against Them. to make you sweat. And now today's fearless players wearing the brilliant blue from Southwest Middle School. It's Speedy Adams and let's 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 the resident red from Teague Middle School, Trey Trickster. Vision purple from Jackson at middle school. It's Jennifer. You got it. You got got got. You got got got. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike O'Malley. Welcome to the Extreme Arena, home of Nickelodeon Guts, the action sports show where kids live out their greatest sports fantasies. Today, our players will be competing in four outrageous events, and after that, they'll get a chance at tackling our radical rock, the Agro Crag where almost anything can happen. The player with the most points at the end of all of our events is the winner. And he or she will be able to take home a glowing piece of our awesome rock. Now remember, all of our events here on Guts are specifically designed with our players' safety in mind. Our players will be wearing safety equipment, and we'll have a professional stunt director and stunt spotters with them at all times. So please, don't try this at home. Now think about facing the defense of an entire championship lacrosse team. You're playing attack, 
and you've got to score. Well, how? Well, here on Guts, you've got an elastic cord on your back so you can leap right over them. Let's go to our referee, Moore Quirk, for the rules. Hey, Mo! Hey there, Mike. At the sound of my whistle, all three players will have 60 seconds to score as many goals as possible. Players must bounce on the ground before they shoot, and the player with the most goals wins. Mike. All right, so our players on top of that aerial bridge, ready to go at our first event here on our competition on Guts today. Looks like they're ready. On your mark, get set. All right, folks. Imagine being able to add about 10 feet to your leap right here. Jumping over an entire team as you go in for the goal. And 48 seconds left. Purple with one in the lead. Red and blue both scoring. On that one, we've got a tie score at 40 seconds. One, one to one. Red and blue both scoring. Another one is blue getting back up on the bridge. Purple still with one. Red just missing. Purple getting up. Letting go, there's two for Purple. We've got a three-way tie, folks. Red with three, blue with three. Purple going up, and she's got three, too. We've got a close game, folks. Four for Red. Red, Red in the lead right here with another one, five. Purple with four. Blue missing. Tie running out, Purple going up for another. Just missing. Red, Blue's got four. Red with six. Red's got another. Blue with one at the buzzer, folks. And I believe purple and blue were both in a tie right before the buzzer there. We'll see if that last score for blue gave him special points, second place points on that. Let's go to Mo for the results, Mo. Indeed, Mike. In first place was Trey in red with seven goals. In second place, Adam in blue with five goals. In third place, Jennifer in purple with four goals. Oh, talk about head-to-head -head competition, folks. All of our players showing their lacrosse expertise as Jennifer dunking that one right in her net there. She took third place points in this event, getting back up on the bridge. Great work. And so, have you ever played lacrosse before? Yeah. So what was it like having an elastic cord on your back when you were playing? Oh, it was great, man. Jumping up and down. It's nuts. <laughs> All right, let's go to Mo and see where our players stand right now. Mo. Well, Mike, first place in our events is worth 300 points. That goes to Trey in red. With 200 points in second place, Adam in blue. And 100 points in third place, Jennifer in purple. That's our first Elastic Sports event. And we'll let our players catch your breath. Right now, we'll go to a segment we call Spill Your Guts. Speedy Adam Zatorski is an all-sports star. With 12 baseball trophies, 10 basketball trophies, and a ton of track ribbons, Speedy is always on top. For Adam, guts equals outrageous. All right, and Speedy, gonna get a little outrageous in our next event. It's called Wild Pitch. It's gonna help our players appreciate the use of batting helmets. Imagine Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, and Greg Maddox all hurling wild pitches at your head. Well, our players got a bat in this event. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. Mike, each of our players will have 45 seconds to hit as many balls as possible. They must stay in their designated area, and the player with the most hits wins. Players, on your mark, get set. All right, and so that whistle means 45 seconds. Fastball after fastball. Looks like Adam in blue. Oh, just hitting that one. Oh, and in the red. That's Trey, the trickster Keeley. Get some good wood on the ball. Let's see what Jennifer's doing. Jennifer, good wood on the ball on that. Now remember, folks, in this event, as you take a look at our batting cage cam and Trey the trickster hitting ball after ball, there's blue Trey, a blue Speedy Adam, purple Jennifer Gadget Griffin, both getting good plastic on the ball. Time is running out. Now remember, folks, you only have to hit the ball in this event. You don't have to knock it out of the park. You just got to get some good wood on the ball. And right there, we have... That's Trey. Oh, so you took a look at Trey right there in our guts batting cage cam. He was getting some great wood on the ball. And Mo has been conferring with all of our judges. She has the results. Let's go to Mo. Mo. Here they are, Mike. In first place with 21 hits, Jennifer in purple. In second place with nine, Trey in red. In third place with seven, Adam in blue. Well, well, well. Talk about... Getting some good wood on the ball. 21. I thought nine was good. I was a little bit out of the ballpark myself in that last event. As Jennifer hitting 21 balls, taking first place point. You blew away the competition in the last event. What did you think about it? 
Balls were coming so fast. They were so hard to hit. It was so difficult. So difficult, you got 21. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to Mo and check out where we stand now. Mo. It was a little frightening from where I was, Mike, too. In first place right now is Trey in red with 500 points. In second place with 400 points, Jennifer in purple. In third place with 300 points, Adam in blue. Well, folks, our players, neck and neck so far. Wheel, guts, play, running, stick around. You guys are watching Nickelodeon Guts. Way to go, Tracy. Not bad at all. All right, hey, guys, come on in here. Today we're playing us against them, girls against guys. The girls, they're track and field superstars. The guys, lacrosse superstars. And the way us against them works is we take two teams, normally never on the same playing field. We put them against each other, and they have to play each other's challenges. Very nice audience today. Just they all got quiet, all in stereo. And they, watch this, they come up now, they come down. Very good. All right, perfect. Well, they'll be clapping again in a second because we're getting ready to play round one. And it's going to be a lacrosse skills challenge. The guys, these, you know, this is their thing. They're lacrosse superstars. Now, this first round is going to be worth 10 points, which you would think the guys might get. But girls, can we do it? Can we win round one? Yeah. You can? Okay, you know what? Just because I feel like it, I'm not going to make it 10 points. I have so much faith in you, I'm going to make it 50 points. What do you think about that? 50 points. But don't worry, we're going to have a track and field competition later that's also going to be 50 points, so it's okay. So this will be worth 50 points, and here's how it's going to work. Guys, you can grab a seat. I'll explain it. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. The girls are going to go first. One member of the ladies' team is already down there. When we say go, she's going to take one of those tennis balls and roll it over here to her teammate who's going to catch it in the cross stick and then has to cradle it as she weaves through the cones just like this and then has to shoot it into the net. If she scores, that's a point. If she doesn't, we're going to keep on going, and they're just going to rotate for 60 seconds. We're going to add up how many goals they get. That'll be how many points they get, and then the guys will go, and whoever gets more points wins. So 60 seconds on the clock. Ladies, you ready? Audience, let me hear you guys again. And go. Go. All right, now try to catch it with a stick. Good. Cradle it. Come on, Alicia, shoot it. Uh, no, 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 no goal. All right, now here's Courtney. She's weaving through the cones. And, oh, keep going. Come on, it's a race. It's a race. All right, let's jump this. Here we go. You can pick it up with your hand. That's okay. Now, shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Oh, come on, keep going. Lacrosse is a hard sport to play if you've never played it before. 25 seconds left. Come on. Yeah, there you go. They're on the board. Pick it up, pick it up, it's okay. 15 seconds left, come on. Yeah, there you go, that's two. Come on, LaShonda, hurry up, hurry up. Five seconds left, come on. One more shot. Oh, out of time, out of time. Everybody come on in. So that's two goals for the ladies, not bad. They got off to kind of a tough start. They were able to get two goals. First time you ever did that. Are you proud of the way it happened? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. When we come back, the guys are going to go. They're going to have to get three goals. If they do that, they'll win. They'll get 50 points. Remember, we have four challenges. This is only the first, so we got a long way to go. More guts, and then the guys are up. Welcome back to Guts, the action sports show that asks, do you have it? the Extreme Arena getting ready for our next event, but right now it is time again for Spill Your Guts. Trey Trickster Keeley is a 12-year-old soccer star. When Trey isn't working his magic on the competition, he's skating or jumping into pools. For Trickster, guts equals breaking new ground. Well, this will be some new ground for our players in this next event. It's Guts on Wheels. We call it Blade Runners. Our players are going to be picking up some super-duper speed in an inline skating race through some pretty hairy obstacles. They're gonna start here at the limbo bars, and then after that, making around our second turn as they go into the frantic flags, making it through the frantic flags. They've gotta make it then through the sack attack, and after they barrel through those sacks, they're gonna come through the car wash, through underneath the car wash, around our final turn, up the bump and dump ramp as they come across the finish line. Let's go to Mo for the rules, Mo. Well, Mike, each player will negotiate our track. They'll race around our track. Players must negotiate each obstacle before moving on to the next one, and time penalties will be added for any violations. Best time wins. On your mark, get set. All right, well, Speedy Adam is first, and look at this man out of the starting blocks as he comes underneath the limbo bars and attacking those flags. No hesitation for this man at all. Well, underneath the car wash, cleaning. 
He's rolling blades as he comes across the finish line right there. Oh, nice work for Speedy Adam on that one. Let's go to Mo and find out his time. Adam clocked in at 16.9 seconds. 16.9. Speed, the name for Speedy. Let's go for our next player. On your mark, get set. All right, so Trey, we we're talking about new ground. He's achieving new heights in all of our events here today. And he goes into this event with 500 points. He was in the lead, folks, but the time to beat 16.9. He's hesitant as he comes up. The bump and dump and across the finish line. And a little bit slow as he came across that finish line. That it might have affected his overall time. Let's go to Mo for his results. Trey clocked in at 20.2 seconds. All right, so Trey, his first place fit, uh, lead in jeopardy after that. We'll see what Jennifer can do. On your mark, get set. All right, Jennifer, as she goes into this, underneath the limbo bar, she goes in this event with 400 points. We'll see if she can keep her balance through the frantic flags, and she does, making it through the sack attack, barreling through that and going underneath the car wash. She's coming in. We'll see what she can get on this one. Coming down the ramp and across the finish line. Also hesitating as she came across the finish line, showing just how important the balance was in this event. Let's go to Mo for the results. Jennifer clocked in at 22.4 seconds. That puts Adam in first place, Trey in second place, Jennifer in third place. All right, so you take a look at that. And right now, we take a look at our replay as our player is doing excellent work in our Blade Runner event. Take a look at the start of Speedy, living up to his name, Speedy, coming underneath those limbo bars and attacking every portion of that event. You went into this event with 300 points. What were you thinking going into it? Oh, I was thinking that I had to win it to be able to still be in the race. If I didn't, I was pretty much out of it. All right, fantastic work for Speedy in that event. Let's go to Mo and check out where we stand. Mo. Very close right now, uh, Mike. In first place, Trey in red with 700 points. In second place, Adam in blue with 600 points. In third place, Jennifer in purple with 500 points. Folks, this is what Guts is all about. It is anybody's game right now, and right now it is time for Spill Your Guts. Jennifer Gadget Griffin is a handy 13-year-old. When Gadget isn't making herself useful on the softball field, she's scoring grades for the honor roll. For Jennifer, guts equals high expectations. All right, our next event is over the top, folks. Over the top, our players will be setting them loose on our high jump bar. Let's we'll see if they can make their way over this bar. I won't be here. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. Mike relaxed, rare. Mike, our uh, players will get three shots to clear the high jump bar at, let me see, at six feet nine inches, seven feet five inches, and eight feet one inch. Only the best jump will be counted, and the player with the highest jump wins. I think our first player is ready. On your mark, get set. All right, so we'll see what Adam can do as he goes up and, oh! Flying right over. Great form as he contorts his body right Twisting it right over that 6-9 mark. He'll go for 7-5 next, and it looks like he is ready. On your mark, get set. All right, so look at Adam with thrusting speed. Oh, he's barreling in. So he will get another shot at 7-5 on that one. As he steps up on our aerial bridge, it looks like he is ready and raring to go. On your mark, get set. One more jump for Adam as he goes up. Oh, folks! Twisted his body. Let's go to Mo for the official on that one, Mo. Adam officially cleared seven feet five inches, Mike. All right, so seven feet five inches for Adam. An excellent jump. So seven five, now the mark to beat as Trey gets ready. Going into this event, Trey is in first place with 700 points. We'll see if he can hold on to that. On your mark, get set. All right, seven five, the height to beat. What can Trey do? Right over six nine. Or I believe he made it right over 6'9". Let's get an official from Mo. Yes, he did, Mike. 6'9", they're moving the bar up to 7'5", and we'll see if he can tie with Adam for the 7'5 mark. He's getting his knee pad in place, and we'll see if the thrusting power of those legs this man has can get him over 7'5". On your mark, get set. All right, concentrating as he goes down, hits the mark. Oh, but comes barreling in. It's very, very difficult to get yourself over that bar. As you can see, he jumped a little bit too close to the bar, wasn't able to get his knees up and over that bar. He's ready for his last jump. On your mark, get set. 
All right, hitting the mark, extremely important. He hit it on that one. Does he go over? All right, so folks, let's go to Mo for the official on that one. Mo. Trey cleared six feet, nine inches. All right, six feet, nine inches for Trey. Now he, on that second jump, in hitting the, missed the mark, went a little bit too close to the bar and barreled into that. On the third jump, hit the mark, but with not enough power to get himself over 7'5". We'll see what Jennifer can do. On your mark, get set. Okay, Jennifer, 7'5", can she beat it? And over 6'9", with the greatest of ease. Let's make sure there wasn't any fault on that one. Mo? No fault, she cleared 6 feet 9 inches. 6 feet 9 inches for Jennifer. And we'll see if she can tie Adam on the 7'5 jump. On your mark, get set. Now let's see if she gets that form she used the first time. Look at her just flying over and twisting her body, kicking her legs up at the last moment to bring it over 7'5. Let's go to Mo. Yes, and she'll be clear, um, trying to clear 8 feet 1 inch next. All right, so she will be the only player to attempt 8'1. Or I'm sorry, I'm wrong on that one. She's going up. Or she, no, she will be the only player to go 8-1. Yes, Let's see Mike. if she can do it. On your mark, get set. 8-1. She's got one jump to try. Will she do it? Oh, folks! 8-1! A Ducks record right there. Jennifer hitting all three. Let's go to the official with Mo. Jennifer cleared 8 feet 1 inches. That puts her in first place. In second place, Adam. In third place, Trey. Take a look. Ray on the replay, doing some nice work on this jump as he went over. And he is in his power. Take a look right here. It's a little bit too close to the mark, or a little bit further on the mark. And ran right into the bar. And he took third place in that. But our first place finisher, Jennifer, with great form in that event. What did you think about that? It was hard to, get over, hard to get over the bar because you had to bend your back so hard and get your feet up. But you did a pretty good job. Let's take a look at the replay and Jennifer right now. What happened right here as you take a look? I was trying to jump up and bend my back as much as I could to get over it without touching the bar. And you're going up and over right here. Yeah, and it, trying hard not to get my feet to touch the thing because they're close. Some great work as she went flying over a superwoman. And let's check out with Mo where she stands on the leaderboard now. Mo. Well, Mike, going into the aggro crag, we have a three-way tie. All of our players have 800 points. There you go. Fantastic, folks. No time to sit around and relax. We got a tie score. That's right. Jump up out of your seats. We got the crag coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we're tied. Going into the crag. A three-way tie, unbelievable action on Nickelodeon Guts, unbelievable action right here in the garage. In case you're just joining in, we're playing us against them. Guys, lacrosse against girls, track and field, the way us against them works is that we take two teams. It's cross-age, cross-gender, cross-sport competition. We take guys against girls, put them on the same playing field. We mix it up. We have a little fun with it. Well. First half of round one, the girls went in our lacrosse game, and they got two goals, which is good considering they've never played lacrosse. They were proud of it, which is good. We're, we're glad. We're glad that they're proud of their score. But now the guys are going to have to go and beat them. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. The second half of round one. Same rules apply, guys. 60 seconds to score as many goals as you can. All right, get to it. Everyone take your places. Jason's going down there. Mike and Blaine are going to stay here. Girls, remember, they got two goals. See if the guys can beat it. 60 seconds on the clock. And go. Crowd, let me hear you. Let me hear you, crowd. Here comes Mike. Lefty, that's a goal. Passes it off to Blaine. You can use your hands, buddy. You can use your hands if you want. Uh-oh. Do it again. Do it again. There you go. And that's two. We're tied. One more wins. One more wins. Got to come back here. There you go, Jace. Come on. This is for the victory. And it's over. That's it. It's over. It's over. Three is enough. Three is plenty. Come on in. Come on in. All right. Round one is in the books. The guys, 50 points. They have the lead so far. Now, ladies, you don't have to be upset because we have three more rounds. We're going to have a standing long jump later on, which you guys you would think would be able to win. So, Courtney, we're still good over here, right? Yeah. We're not worried? No. All right, good. And guys, Blaine, we're feeling strong right now? 
-hmm. Okay. Well, that's how it's going down so far. We're going to be back. We're going to play round two. The Agro Crag is coming up next on Gus. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gut. And this is what it all comes down to. Our biggest challenge yet to come. Who's going to get to the top of the Agro Crag first? It has been close all day long. Let's go to Mo and see where we stand. Mo. Well, here it is, Mike. After four events, we have a three-way tie. All of our players have 800 points. There it is. All of our players with 800 points, and the story all day has been at least a first-place finish for each player. Take a look right here is Jen holding the ball in right there and helping. Oh, just missing on that one. She took third place in our attack event. Getting back up on the aerial bridge getting set to do another one and Trey in wild pitch he took second place in this event keeping his eye on the ball and trying to hit as many wild pitches as possible Adam take a look at this man as he goes through the car wash taking first place in Blade Runner look at the determination on this man's first place to take a first place finish in this one as he comes screaming across the finish line with his first place finish and then Jen, not to be denied, coming back and twisting her body right over that bar for a first place finish and over the top. And all of our players now at the base of our mountain getting ready for our final event, the Agro Crag event. Folks, we got a tie score, and this is what it all comes down to here on the Agro Crag. That Agro Crag always growing. Now the race begins at Boulder Canyon, our six foot rock ledge. And our players can trigger obstacles like floods, avalanches, snowstorms, loose ledges, rolling rocks, and all that smoke, all while they try to climb to the top of the peak first. The sound and fury of a living, breathing mountain, ready to challenge our players with all the guts they've got. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mike, players will start at the sound of my whistle. Each player has an identical side of the mountain to climb and may not cross into another player's path. Now, during their climb, our players must light up each of eight targets located on their side of the crag. The first player to activate all of the targets, including the final one at the peak of the mountain, will receive first place points. Mike. All right, Mo. So our final chapter here on Guts will be who will hit the final actuator first. Let me remind you that in this event, the points have skyrocketed. Third place being worth 375 points. Second, 550 points. First, 725 points. All day long, our players have been competing head to head, each of them taking a first place finish. It doesn't get any closer than this. 800 to 800 to 800. All at the base of that mountain, ready to climb. Who's gonna get there first? We're about to find out. Kick it off, Mo. Players, on your mark, get set. That whistle means our players begin their climb up Boulder Canyon. On route to our first actuator, that's Jen in purple. In the second actuator, in red, that's Trey. There's Mike in blue. In purple, that's Jen. In red, that's Trey. Jen's in the lead, folks, in purple. Mike in second in blue, Mike makes that actuator. Mike's gonna get back down and hit that one. Mike got a miss. So first, the second actuator that he missed and continues his climb not to be denied. Trey will get to the top of that mountain. Talk about determination. He got a chance to climb that crag and he's going to get up there and lock in third. And you take a look at Adam and Jen. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get any better than that here on Guts. Let's go to Mo for our results. In first place on the Agro Crag, Mike and Jennifer in purple. In second place, Adam in blue. In third place, Trey in red. All of our players here today, as right here in blue, that's Adam. 
takes the turn without hitting that actuator. Missed that one. The second actuator as he tried to climb his way up that maze. The rocks came down on him. And then there's Jen right there in purple on the right-hand portion of your screen. We're at the top of the crag where the crag troll is telling Trey, sorry, Trey, you missed an actuator. You got to go back down. Hey, Blue, you missed one, too. Jen's coming in. She had missed one. She had gone back down and locked in in first place points. That was Jen on the Agro Crag event. We were tied. She got 725. Let's check out the final leaderboard, Mo. Mike, it was all up to the Agro Crag today. In third place, Trey in red with 1,175 points. In second place, Adam in blue, 1,350 points. Our winner today, Jennifer in purple, 1,525 points. Mike. All of our players competing with the intensity. They deserve the bronze going to Trey. The silver medal going to Adam. And ladies and gentlemen, the gold goes to Jennifer. Got to the top of the crack first. Give her a piece of that glowing rock. She deserves it, folks. Let's get in here for a moment. Great job today. What'd you think of that crack event? It was hard because of falling rocks and I missed that house activator, but it's got to be the shoes. It's got to be the shoes. Everything to be proud of today. How do you feel that you won? Fine. He's great. Ladies and gentlemen, no ifs, ands, or buts. Today, these kids got guts. Do you have it? All guts players compete in Reebok Athletics News. It reminds you that on Planet Reebok, there are no limits. Studios, Orlando, Florida. Nickelodeon Gas is brought to you in part by America's dairy farmers and milk processors who ask, got milk? finish on Nickelodeon Guts. What is up, guys? It's me, Dave Azer. Two all-star teams in the house playing us against them. Girls against guys. The girls are track and field superstars, and the guys are lacrosse maniacs. We're going to give you the scores, tell you exactly what's going down, but first we're going to run through the shows that are coming your way today in the wild card. Here you go. Coming up next, Wild and Crazy Kids, let's go fishing, lacrosse style. Then Nickelodeon Guts. Force field hurdles and then more wild and crazy kids. Watch kids compete at the track meet. We have one round of our four rounds in the books. It's over. It was the lacrosse challenge. The guys won it. So they lead right now by the score of 50 to nothing. But that's OK, because we're going to have another chance for the girls to come back. We're going to have round two. It's going to be a trivia lingo round coming up next. But first, here's wild and crazy kids. He's not from that. You'll be fine. Yeah, you can hit anything. Just don't worry about it. Yeah, but, but this thing has power. How am I going to return the serve? Well, what, what are you talking about? This is no normal server. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Take a look for yourself. Um, hey, I mean, uh -huh. good luck, man. Yeah, uh, yeah you get, get, get some good practice. to Wild and Crazy Kids. The show that goes anywhere and does anything to find kids having fun. With your hosts, Annette Chavez, Omar Goody, and Donnie Jepko.
No, Wild and Crazy Kids hasn't gone to war. We just found these unbelievable miniature battleships that shoot tennis balls from cannons, and we thought, hey, they're crazy enough to be on our show. So we came up with a game called Victory at Sea. We'll have two teams fighting it out with tennis balls in a wild target practice game that's unlike anything we've ever done before. Naval combat was never like this. Check out these runaway go-karts, slipping, sliding, and racing around this track, just trying to get around. Well, we're here in Anaheim, California, the Hewish Family Fun Center, where in just a few minutes, it's gonna be every driver for himself, as these eight racers try tossing rings onto the back of each other's cars. It's a test of skill and accuracy as they bump and slide all over this track in our wild and crazy kids go-kart ring toss derby. <laughs> Don't drive away. Dang, feeling good? Me too. Nice boat like this, ice cold water. I love it. Oh, uh, Omar, we got a show to do. Oh, right, right. I bet you wonder why I'm floating around in this bumper boat. I bet you also wonder why I'm carrying this fishing net. Two good things to wonder about. Carrying the fishing net and picking back in the Omar. Oh, right, yeah, right. Uh, now we're going to take both of these things, put them together, and play a game called Bumper Boat Lacrosse. Lacrosse is an old game developed by the American Indian. It's a simple game requiring two teams, a ball, and netted sticks. You move the ball up the field by tossing it back and forth between players using your lacrosse sticks. And hopefully you can toss the ball into your opponent's goal to score points. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Only we're going to use fishing nets. And instead of running around on grass, each player has to move around this pool on these bumper boats. We have two teams of four kids. There are no goalies. And players are allowed to use their hands to pass balls and score goals. Now we play two five-minute halves, and the team with the highest score at the end will be our winner. Our referee will make sure we play a fair game, and there's protective padding on all the equipment so no one should get hurt when they swing it around. And the ref throws the ball in play. Throws the ball. These guys are all going in circles trying to get that ball. Oh, that guy's got it, almost. Ooh, he loses it. He's trying to get it from behind, turns around to go back for it. And another guy gets it. And he's got it. Turning around, trying to get over to that goal. Ooh, she gets bumped. She's got the ball with her hands, trying to pass it to somebody else. And, oh, over into the water. Trying to get it to her other teammate. And, oh, she tries to get it. Yes, yeah, she's got it. All right, now she's going for the goal. She shoots, oh, and it falls just a bit short. Who goes around to scoop it up? She's got a long way to go for her goal, though. She's trying to get there. Oh, she's going in circles. Oh, she gets bumped. She's still near the yellow net, but she scoops it up to her hand, trying to get it to her other teammate. What is she gonna do? She throws. <laughs> and Blue tries to get it. She's. Whoa. And Blue's almost got it. Nope. Now it's over to Yellow. And Yellow scoops it up and she's looking for an opening. She gets bumped by Blue but holds on. And she passes off to her teammate. He's circling around, eyeing the goal. He lets the Blue Bolt slide by and there he goes. He's got a clear shot at the goal. He moves into position, shoots, and scores! Yellow one, blue nothing. Great pass and teamwork on that first goal. Way to go, yellow. All right. The ball's thrown back in play. There goes the blue right off to go for that ball. Ooh, she tries to scoop it up with her net. Got to turn it around the other way. And, oh, who has it? Blue's got it, all right. Throws it over. Oh, bounces off of Blue's boat. And her teammate tries to scoop it up again. She's turning around in circles. She's almost got it, though. Real close. But Blue picks it up and passes down. Oh, Yellow blocks it with his stick and catches it. Great play. Let's see if he can score another goal. He's turning around. Going back to that goal. Bumps into his teammate. And passes it. Oh, it bounces off her boat back into the water. 
should have just taken it himself. But Blue's going for it. She's, oh, back to yellow. Gotta use your, whoa. He's still going in the circles. But I think he's got the ball. Nope. Okay, 10 seconds to the end of the first half. Yellow tries to scoop up the loose ball. And that's it. So far, the score is yellow one, blue nothing. We'll be back in just a few minutes to see who wins our waterlogged game of bumper boat lacrosse. Stay with us. Coming up, go-karts race around a track in a fun-filled ring toss game. And battleships shoot tennis balls at walls of cans of wild and crazy kids. Get out the sunscreen because gas is off to camp. From campfires to poolside pranks, gas has taken camp by storm. Now stay put campers for more Nickelodeon gas. Yes! Oh. Here we are. Guys, where should we put our stuff? Uh, these two bugs are almost left. Excellent. I, I got, I got top. top. I called it. No, no, you got top last year. I get top this year. Dude, last year has nothing to do with this year. I got top, you got bottom. I called it. What's fair is fair. It's justice. I get top, you get bottom. Justice? What are you yes. talking about? Top. You get bottom. Top. You get bottom. I got the top. You get the bottom. I got the bottom. You get the top. I got the bottom. No, 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 the top. No, the bottom. You're getting the top and that's it, all right? No more conversation. I get the bottom, all right? Okay, hey, this is nice. That's what you want. Hey, could you give me a spot, maybe? Right here, right here. Oh. Get a load of these battleships. On the high seas in time of real war, they'd be totally useless. But here in our show, armed with cannons that fire tennis balls, well, that's another story entirely. It'll be victory at sea as two teams shoot it out to see who has the best aim and can knock over their enemy's targets. We'll put one team of kids inside two battleships, and the other team will be on land behind a fence to score the lane for cans on the ships. The ships will shoot at a camp-filled wall. Each team has three minutes to knock over enemy targets. Then we'll switch places and put the land-based team in the boats and the boat operators on land. And of course, at the end of the two rounds, the team who scored the most points will be our winner. Now let's meet our teams. First, we have the Bizarre Bombers. Yeah! Facing them are the Weird Warriors. Yeah! For the first round, the Bizarre Bombers will be in the boats and the Weird Warriors will be on land. We'll start the clock when I say go. And guys, good shooting. Yeah! Hi, my name is Gavin Wall, and I'm 12 years old. Hi, my name is Josh Glass, and I'm 10 years old. Hi, my name is Amy Drell, and I'm 11 years old. Hello, my name is Melissa Orkin, and I'm 8 years old. Hi, my name is Robin, and I'm 11 years old. Hi, my name is Adam Drell, and I am 8 years old. Hi, my name is Jennifer Fruit, and I'm 9 and a half years old. Hi, my name is Shane Glass, and I'm 12 years old. Here come the battleships. The weird warriors are getting ready to shoot their tennis balls at them. And the horn sounds to start the game. They're loading up their guns. There go some cans. Is this fun or what? Hey, there goes a bunch of cans. There goes a can off the battleship. Great shot. The weird warriors are loading and shooting as fast as they can. Time is moving fast. Good shot. There go two. There goes another can. Look at those kids move. Ooh, missed it. There's a can in the water. Some balls flying all over the place. There goes one can. He's moving really fast there. And there's the horn. Okay, let's see how they did. After the first round, the Pink Weird Warriors scored 1,350 points. And the Bizarre Bombers clean the wall of cans for a perfect score of 1,600 points. Now let's switch positions and see if the Warriors can come from behind and win, or if the Bombers can keep their lead. Mark, get set, go! 
and the Bombers start loading their tennis balls. Here we go. Ooh, there's a direct hit for the Warriors. The Bombers just missed the cans with those shots. There go a couple of cans. Nice shooting. Oh, a couple of cans more. Look out. There go a couple more cans. The points are adding up. The Bombers need some more hits. Let's do it, guys. Come on, guys. You're moving really fast there. Ooh, there goes one can. Look at the move. There goes a horn. Let's get everybody together and see who won. Guys. And the final score was the Purple Bazaar Bombers with 2,400 points. All right. And the Pink Weird Warriors, 2,950 points. All right. They win by 550 points. We had a great time. We, um, it was kind of hot in the submarine, but we had a great time and I shot a lot of balls and I had a lot of fun. It was real fun when you when you were in the boats and you're going after the targets and they were shooting back at you. It was really fun. So did you think the pink team was gonna come from behind and beat you guys? We thought we had it from the first half of the round. We thought we can get keep it going and keep the lead and knock all the players down to win it. But they came back from behind and knocked all of them down. But you guys had fun. Lots of fun. All right, give yourselves a hand. Thanks, you guys, for playing. You were good sports. You guys did a great job. All right. And we're back for the exciting finish of our Bumper Bolt lacrosse game. After the first half, the score is yellow one, blue nothing. But there's still five minutes of game time left, so the score is bound to change. So everybody back into the water, and good luck, you guys. And the ref puts the ball in play to start the second half. Blue's racing towards it. She misses. And it's over to yellow. Nope. It's a squabble for the ball. As the bumper boats collide. It's anybody's ball. Nope, it's Yellow's ball. She's got it. She scoops it out of the net with her hands. Looking for somewhere to pass it. Or is she going for the goal? A little stuck there. Right up, the ball's back into the water. And Blue scoops it up. Look at her move towards the goal. She breaks free. She's got a shot at it. And there it goes. Yes, she ties it up one to one. Right past two yellow defenders and the goal. Excellent. And there goes the ball back in play. It's all tied up. Let's see who gets the lead. All right, Blue's going for it. Maybe they can catch the lead. Up, oh, they give it, pass it over to his other teammate. She's a little turned around there, but she's looking for the goal. Up, oh, she's got the ball. Straightens herself out. And she's looking to pass the ball over to her other teammate who didn't see the ball. It's out in the water. Somebody's going for it. Up, oh, it's the Blue. He's got it up. Maybe he can get the lead there. Drops off a nice pass, and there she goes. She's moving fast. Looking for that goal. She's got it by her hand. She shoots. Yes, and she makes it in. Now it's blue two, yellow one. In motion, she takes her hands off the steering post and throws it in the far corner of the net. Beautiful. There goes the ball back in play. Remember, time is running out. Yellow needs a score to tie it up and stop Blue's momentum. Let's see if they can do it. It's crazy out there, but Yellow's got the ball. See, looks like he's going for the goal. He's heading straight for it. Scoops up the ball, passes it to his teammate. She's got it. 
Oh, she goes, she throws. Oh, falls just a bit short. She's going for it again. She tries to scoop it up. So does Blue. Oh, will somebody get it? They're all turning around in circles. She's almost got it. It's close. Oh, it's almost in there. He's almost there. He's digging for it. He needs to pull back. He's almost got it. Oh, 10 seconds left. Eight, seven. Come on, yellow. Five more seconds, yellow. Turn it around. He goes. Oh, no. Blue two, yellow one. All right, that was great. Who was it who made the winning goal here? It was me. I scored both of the goals. Now, who helped you on the first goal? The first goal, Josh passed it to me, and then the whole way through, both of them were passing it and really helping us. All right, you'd like to do it again? Yeah. All right, and who made it over here? I did. All right, how was it? It was fun once everybody was cheering when I scored the goal. And how was it throwing that ball around? It was hard to pick it up with the net because you're using the right hand to steer and the left hand. If you're right-handed, it's hard. All right, well, you guys all did a great job. Give yourselves a little round of applause for that. Well, good. <laughs> There you have it. Thanks for everybody for playing. Congratulations to our winners. Hope to see you some other time. All right. Don't change lanes. Go-Kart Ring Talk is coming your way on Wild and Crazy Kids. A comeback by the blue team on the Wild and Crazy Kids. I wonder if our blue team out here can make a similar comeback. Blue against green. Us versus them. Action pack. So far, we've completed one round, and the guys have the lead by the score of 50 to nothing. But, girls, don't worry. It could change right now because we are ready to play round two. And we're going to go lingo style on this one. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to read words, verbiage, terms, whatever you want to call them from different sports. Either lacrosse, track and field, or an independent sport. You guys buzz in, you're either going to answer, it's from lacrosse, it's from track and field, or it's from neither. If you get it right, that's going to be 10 points for you. If you get it wrong, the other team can steal. And if they get it right, then they're going to get 10 points. We're going to keep on playing until you hear this. There it is. Then we're done playing, and we're going to add up the points, and we're going to see what happens. You guys ready? Yeah, All right, ready. here we go. Buzz it when you got it. The first turn's coming up right now. It is crease. Crease. Guys. Lacrosse. Good for you. Next one. Rabbit. Girls. Uh, no. Track and field. Okay, that's okay. Next one. Uh, well, my fault. We're just going to skip that one. Next one. Wishbone. Is it football? Is it lacrosse, track and field, or neither? Neither. Girls. Good job. It's football. Next one. Penalty box. Guys. Lacrosse. Good. Next one. Lily. Double buzz. Girls got there a split second earlier. Neither. 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 Good for you. Next one. Screening. Girls. Check. Incorrect, guys. Neither. neither. Actually, it's lacrosse. Screening to stand in front of somebody. No. Hurdle. Oh, well. Girls. Track and field. Good. Steeplechase. Guys. Neither. Incorrect. Girls for the steal. Lacrosse. Uh, which one are you going with? Lacrosse. Incorrect. Oh, Track and field. Next one. <laughs> Fliffus. Neither. Neither is right. Uh, hammer. Girls. Good. Next one. Cross. Girls. Yes, at the buzzer. They got it right. There you go. All right, we're, we're going to add them up. We're going to give them the scores. We're going to tell you what happened. Each one of those correct answers was worth 10 points. So we're going to add up all the scores. We have mathematicians from Harvard and MIT working on it right now. And apparently what they've come up with is that the us team got 50 points for that. And the them team got 30 points for that. So now, at halftime, halfway done, the total combined scores, the guys have the lead, 80 to 50. It's a lot closer now. You see that, girls? A lot closer. Coming up next is going to be round three. It's going to be a track and field competition. So the girls can win that one, too. More loud and crazy kids is coming up, and then we're back for round three. Don't go away. What you're about to see is some silly high-speed action on the slippery go-kart race course. It's a fast-paced game of ring toss, and the object is very simple. Eight kid drivers will have four minutes to race around the turns and over the bumps of this course. Each driver will ride with a bunch of individually color-coded rings and try tossing them onto poles attached to the back of everyone's go-kart. When each driver has run out of rings, they can go to a pit stop and get some more. But at the end of four minutes, the driver who's tossed the most rings onto the other driver's poles will be our winner. Here are eight kid drivers lined up and ready for action. They finished their practice laps and it's now time to play for real. Is everybody ready? Yeah! 
Okay, so get your engine started. Okay, guys, on your mark, get set, go! There are first drivers at the head of the pack. They're filling each other out, looking for the opportunity to strike. Okay, so yellow's in the lead. Oh! And they're going around. Is he going to try it? Almost! <laughs> Whoa! Almost a 360 there. Oh! There goes one on... Oh, there goes two! Good job! All right. Oh, nice try. Okay. This looks like a lot of fun. Oh, bump. <laughs> All right. Good try. Okay. The track looks pretty slippery. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. He's just wasting shots. I think they should get up beside each other and then try to shoot. It looks a lot easier that way. There we go. Well, good try. Boy, it's really hard to score out there. These carts are moving at a high speed. Up. Okay, there's rings all over the track. <laughs> Whoa, no, that was a bad shot. You got to get beside the carts, guys. Oh, like that. That almost got on. Okay. Oh, almost again. Around that corner, good job, good try. Okay. What they need to do is bump into each other and then try, because it slows the carts down. Like that, there we go. Good job. <laughs> These carts must be, there's another one. They must be going about 20, 25 miles per hour. They're going pretty fast. The kids are having a lot of fun out there. Oh. Okay. And around the corner. Is she going to get her? Nope. All oh, right. Nice bump there. <laughs> They're bumping each other all over the place. Oh. Hand cars 11 and 10 make a pit stop for more rings. Hey, no bumping in the pit stop. Boy, this sure looks like a lot of fun. I wish I was out there. It must be hard to be patient and wait for the right moment to throw. <laughs> but that's part of the game. Okay, he's getting ready to throw. And he throws. Almost. And she throws. They're getting close, but <laughs> no cigar. <laughs> oh, nice one. There we go. As you can see, she just got right up towards him and, like, tossed it on. Okay, another good try. And number 31 is making another pit stop. And number one's coming in too. They're running out of rings real fast because I think they're throwing a little too far away from each other's carts. Nice try there. A no smack. <laughs> Another one. There we go. Here they come. Okay, in the end of the race. Okay, so how was that? It was great. Was it was it fun? Yeah. Okay, what was the hardest thing about that race? Well, getting the hoops around the little Things. Okay, so what were you thinking about when cars came up behind you? Well, at first I'd try to dodge them, but then I'd wait until they got right up next to me, and then I'd try to throw little hoops around their poles. Hey, pretty good strategy. That Did it work? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. The hardest part was throwing the ring. Okay, well, you did a great job. Good job, okay? Johnny, we have a winner. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got some results, kids. Come on. Okay. They're right here. All right, we have a three-way tie for third place between Jennifer, Lauren, and Megan. Good job. Okay, and for second place is Jamie. Okay, Jamie. All right, good job. 
and our winner in car number six is Kathy. Yeah! All right! Congratulations, Kathy. So how did you, what do you think your strategy was? How did you get so many rings on other people's cars? Well, probably when they were stuck, you know, I just kind of You kind of tricked them in. <laughs> Congratulations to the winners, and thanks to everyone for playing. Guys, good job. Yeah! for Nick Gass, and here's what's in play today for the weekend of July 6, 2001. In Port Ritchie, Florida, the best six bubble blowers the world's ever seen will be blowing bubbles for saving bonds at the National Bubble Blowing Contest Finals. Now, last year's winner, Adam Fegley, received the star treatment after his big victory. And many people in New York will be taking a subway this weekend to see the Yankee take on the Mets. By the way, you guys need to take that D train all the way to the Bronx, and you get off there, and you'll be fine. Now, there's some bad blood between these two teams from last year's World Series, which the Yankees won. And a big happy 21st birthday to figure skater Michelle Kwan. Michelle took on the silver medal at the 1998 Olympics. She undoubtedly is getting ready for the 2002 Olympics in hopes of capturing the gold this time. Everybody have a great weekend. That's what's in play today. Just joining us for playing us against them. We have the girls track and field squad against the guys lacrosse team. And this is what we do in us against them. We take a bunch of players from different sports. We put them on the same field and we put them against each other. We're going to let you know what the scores are, tell you what's coming up next. But first, remind you what shows are still coming your way. So here they go. Take a look. Coming up next, Nickelodeon Guts. This is one tough track. And then Wild and Crazy Kids, some fun track and field events. Two out of the four rounds so far are done. Take a look at the scoreboard to see that the girls are doing well. They got 50 points. The guys are doing a little better. They have 80 points. But coming up next, 50 points at stake. Track and field, long jump, their specialty. We'll see if they win. Here comes Guts, and then we're back. Kim David, Dominator Douglas, take over the competition. Will Richard Rampage close go into the first place frenzy? Or can Kirsten, Super K, Romeo overpower them both and take home the gold? Do you have it? I'm Mike O'Malley. Welcome to the Extreme Arena. This is Nickelodeon Guts. Do you have it? It takes a certain kind of person to keep the body working to the level of precision that's needed to be risen to the top. Do you have it? It takes a certain kind of something to keep the heart pumping, something everybody needs to achieve to succeed. You need a lot. 
where sports in space is a reality. Well, folks, here on Guts, we are training our athletes for the rigors of competition at zero G, a new sport here on Guts. Let's go to our referee, Mark Quirk, for the rules. Hey, Mo, how you doing today? Like this, Mike. Like that. Thumbs uh, up. Yes, thumbs up for today. At the sound of my whistle, each of our players will race around the zero G track. Fastest time wins. On your mark, get set. All right, so David will be going first. Now the clock starts right as they go over that starting line, not as the whistle goes, as we go right into the black hole and the force field hurdles. You see right there, trying to make his way over. That's David. Now, folks, our players got to completely reorient themselves and run horizontally across this track. As you see, David, a slight hesitation right there, up close and personal, going right into the black hole. He did not get a good leap over that, but just pushes the hurdle out of his way and really is trying to stand up right here. He's leading in the wrong direction as he comes across the finish line right there. So, folks, our players really need to think horizontally in this event. Let's go to Mo and get the results. Mo. David clocked in at 28.5 seconds. <laughs> Completely reorienting yourself, and you can see he's trying to stand up a little bit right here as he comes crashing into the second force field hurdle right there. Finally, he just pushes it out of his way and continues his climb. As you can see, David getting off of our aerial bridge right there. Our second player, Richard, will get set. That's Richard Klaus, and he is uh, stepping up. You can see him right there. He has been laying horizontally to sort of reorient his thinking right here so he can get ready for this event. We'll see what he can do if he can beat David's time. On your mark, get set. All right, so this is completely powered by our athlete strength right here. We'll see if Richard is trying to stand up a little bit right there. He's got to lean more to his left side instead of trying to stand up. And you see he's not leaning down enough. He's trying to run standing up instead of sideways. Jumping out to take advantage of zero gravity is an extremely important thing in this event. And he's not staying centered. He's trying to lean up instead of leaning down and he's just basically crawling across our zero g track right now he cannot go underneath that hurdle he must go over the hurdle and continue to fight his way across that finish line right there and so richard was definitely having trouble with thinking horizontally right there he's trying to stand up for most of his way around that track let's go to mo and get the results mo richard clocked in at 35.1 seconds so again going into the second hurdle he had come around uh, the edge of nothing and you can see him trying to stand up. He's putting his weight up towards his right shoulder rather than to his left and so that gave him trouble right there as you see him stepping down off the aerial bridge. That's a very exhausting, exhausting event. So Kirsten is ready. On your mark, get set. All right, and so Kirsten, we'll see what she can do. If she can beat that time to beat. 28.5 seconds, she's looking good so far. Goes right into the black hole. was an unbelievable feat of athleticism. Let's go to Mo and get the official time. Mo! Kirsten clocked in at 17.3 seconds, so that puts her in first place. David in second place and Richard in third place. Take a look right here. Get out of the way. A purple locomotive is flying down the zero-g track. Sports in space, a reality for Kirsten Romeo taking first place points. Let's go to Mo. Check out our leaderboard. Mo. Well, first place in our events, Mike, is worth 300 points. That goes to Kirsten in purple. In second place with 200 points, David in blue. In third place with 100 points, Richard in red. All right, and that's just our first event. Let's go to Mo and check out our event lineup for the day. Mo. Well, first up today was the Space Race Zero G, and next is the Surfboard Showdown Hang 10. In our second half, we have the Base Path Obstacle Course Extreme Baseball, and then it's time for a Slam Fest with Slammer Jammer. And as always, the Mega Crank is last. Mike. Someone's going home with the Guts goal, but right now it's time for David to spill his guts. Hi, I'm David Douglas. I play basketball, soccer, baseball, football, ice hockey. And I'm also a triathlete. When I get older, I wish to become a pro hockey player with Kirk Muller. Hey, folks, surf's up, and we're going to 
high, hit the waves. That's right, it is hang 10. And we have transformed our guts pool into a raging ocean. We're going surfing, dude. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo! At the sound of my whistle, each player will have 30 seconds to collect as many buoys as they can. Players must keep the buoys on their arms, and the player who collects the most wins. On your mark, get set. All right, folks, and so you can see David. Oh, David's off the board immediately. But he still has 25 seconds to get up there and get as many buoys as you can. So you can see those waves rolling over our players. Our players, as he falls off again, that's... David, David's really got to get balanced and stay on that board. He's getting some help from the Sun Spotters. It looks like right now he has about four buoys. He's picked up his base again. Oh, oh he's falling off the board again. He's got to continue to fight his way towards those buoys because there's still some time left. There's another one. Looks to have about five right now. So folks, you can see the coordination so important, keeping your body on the board and your arms pumping. Very difficult. Let's go to Mo and get the results. Mo. David collected five buoys. David, my man, come over here for a second. Now, obviously, you had some trouble staying on the board right there. What happened in that last event? Uh, I just forgot to put, wrap my feet around the board. Forgot to wrap his feet around the board? All right. He, got a, he still got five buoys. Let's go to Mo and get the next player. On your mark, get set. All right, and so Richard is up next. Richard needs a good finish in this one because he has right now 100 points. And you can see... David talked about wrapping your body and your legs around that board right there. Richard's also having a little bit of trouble right there. He's not really centered as he gets his fourth one. Holding on to the board, he just fell off right there. So you can see the fearlessness. The players cannot hesitate when these waves roll over them. They must continue to fight. He looks to have about five. As you see, he has four in front of him and six seconds to get them. Will he get those? Looks to have another one. Two in one hand right there. Excellent work. As the horn sounds right there, now he needed a good finish in this event because he had 100 points going into it. Let's go to Mo and get the results. Mo. Richard collected eight buoys. Excellent work. Watch right here. As he falls off, but he has right now about six buoys in his hand, reaches for another two. His hands were full and he still had room for more. Great finish right there for Richard. And now our leader, Kirsten, goes up next. On your mark, get set. All right, Super K is her nickname, and this is one fierce competitor right there. You can see her barreling after the first buoy and determined to get after the other ones, also having trouble with the board. So all three of our players having trouble with the board in this event. You see that they must kick their legs and their arms to paddle their way throughout the length of this pool and still get the buoys. As she falls off the board, she only has three. Right now, she needs at least two, and she's going to tie for second place points. And she blows off that one by her left leg and is reaching for ones further away. She looks to have about five right now. So time runs out. And uh, we will go to Mo and get the results for Kirsten. Mo. Mike, our players have to be on the board when they collect the buoy. So Kirsten collected four buoys. That puts Richard in first place, David in second place, and Kirsten in third place. All right, so as Mo said, you can't count one of the buoys if you grab it when you're off the board. Kirsten getting four in this one, falling off the board right now. I tell you, these waves just knocking our players all over the place. And our players, after our second event, congratulating one another. Let's go to Mo and check out our leaderboard. Mo. Hey, Mike, it's a three-way tie. All of our players have 400 points. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, I got a little wet myself in that last event. You come back, we got Extreme Baseball and the Mike and Mo Halftime Show. Stick around. NHL Breakout is on the loose. NHL Breakout is the traveling hockey tournament and festival that takes the game to the street with skills challenges, NHL pros, and inline and street hockey competition. The action is really heating up this summer, and gas is throwing a little fuel on the fire. Kids who compete in the 12 and under roller hockey division will be playing for a piece of hockey history, the Nickelodeon Gas Can. That's right, winning teams from all across the country will be immortalized on the Gas Can Trophy, just like Chicago's Shark 12 and Crazy Platypuses, who came home winners in last Last month's tournament, but only one team will have the privilege of hoisting the mighty can above their heads at the NHL Breakout Championship. Check out NHL Breakout this month in Washington, New York, and San Jose. For more on NHL Breakout, keep it right here on Nickelodeon Gas.
Welcome back to Guts. It's the Mike and Mo Halftime Show. I'm Mike. She's Mo. And uh, somebody's going to be going home with a glowing piece of our awesome rock, that big trophy at the yeah, end. Yeah, but we don't know who because we've got one of those funny three-way tie things happening. Exactly. I, I like those. It, well, I like those, too. That means a great competition. Let's take a look at some highlights. Yes. Let's go ahead and do this. This is our Zero G track. You'll see Richard having a really hard time. He had a hard time adjusting to the change of his equilibrium. Just bashed his way through the force field. But this is Kirsten, who came around like winged mercury speeding her way along she the track. She was out of control. Just threw herself over the finish line for a fabulous, fabulous time there. This is David who um, managed to collect five buoys and Richard who managed to collect eight here. Had a hard time staying on his uh, on his surfboard, but he managed. He managed. In and the we got, end. He certainly did. And we got two more events before the end, which is, of course, the Mega Crag. But before we get to that, you got to get back down on the field I for our next event. I have to leave. Bye. We'll see you in a little bit. And right now, once again, it is time for Spill Your Guts. Hi, I'm Richard the Rampage Class. I like soccer, baseball, and football, but my favorite sport is basketball. I like a good competition, and I think that's why I'm on the show, Guts. Trying for an inside the park home run has never been tougher, folks. That's right, it is extreme baseball. Let's take a look at what we have on our base pass today. Our players are going to be starting right here. The Ken Griffey Jr. Singh, that's right, they're going to be flying down the fire pole right here, and then they're going to come through the tire crawl, out of this one, up to an elevated second base. They're going to keep on running in. Then they're going to hit that airbag right up to the cargo net. Then they're going to come down that slide right there, and boom, into the airbag. Up the wall right there, and all the way into home for a neon Dion slide into the plate. Let's go to Mo. Mo. Mike, our players are time from the batter's box to home plate. They must complete each obstacle before moving on to the next one. Best time wins. On your mark, get set. All right, so both of us are losing our breath right here, but we'll see if our players can hold on. As David, he'll set the pace right here. He's hit a very, very deep drive, folks. Imagine hitting the fastball off of Roger Clemens and sending it all the way back to the Green Monster as it hits the top the Green Monster and carrying off the field. Our outfields are chasing after the ball as our players go through an extremely, extremely difficult baseball challenge right here. Elevated base pass. That's right, folks. As David goes up the cargo net, trying to get his feet in the cargo net and continue his pace. As the blue player, he will set the pace right here, folks. As I said, down the slide. Outfield is chasing after the ball. They've picked it up. They've hit the cutoff man. Cutoff man has bobbled the ball. Here's the throw to the plate. Here's the play. Here's the slide. David up. The catcher holding on to the ball. He's just going to barrel into our player. And the ball went loose as he slides right in. Let's go to Mo and get the time. Oh. David clocked in at 52.7 seconds. 52.7. Now the time to beat. Richard's up next. On your mark, get set. Deep drive. That's right, folks. Richard, down the fire pole. Now, the smart moves in this event is he barrels through those tire crawls. A quick start that's going to keep up your confidence and set a fast pace. Speed. Remember, folks, the fastest time wins. So you see as Richard gets up our column right there to our elevated second base. This is a part where a lot of our players have trouble on the extreme baseball event because agility is extremely important. you got to go from one obstacle to the next continue to negotiate the different types of obstacles and speed your way home in the fastest time available to your body. That's right, as Richard powering his way down the slide, he tries to stand up at the end of that one. You see the determination on this man's face. He ran up, halfway up that, without even using the rope. Here's the throw, here's the play at the plate. It's gonna be close. Oh yeah, and you see him crashing down into home plate. If that time's official, he'll be in the lead. Mo. Richard clocked in at 46.8 seconds. So there won't be a tie at the end of this event as Kirsten gets ready to go next. On your mark, get set. Now you saw Kirsten's overpowering speed in zero G. Let's see if she can get a quick start, and indeed she does. A very deep drive and good speed, barreling through those tires, pulling herself through. They gotta really power herself through this event. You're running against the clock and the other players, agility. As we talked about, you saw that Richard had a little bit of hesitation here in this column event. Right here, as Kirsten goes up, she needs to get right to the top of that platform and now really hustle. Rolling out of the airbag, 
She rolls the opposite way. That's going to affect her time. She's got to go further around. That may hurt her, folks. She's got to get there in about 13 seconds, and she's going to beat Richard's time. So a little hesitation. She seems to be out of breath. She's got eight seconds to get up there. She's hustling. Oh, folks, this event takes so much energy. You see, she's out of breath as she tries to make her way up. But she's got to hurry down that slide. You see her struggling right there. Kirsten, an incredible competitor. You see, trying to make her way around the base pass. That's how difficult this event is, folks. And right there, having some trouble. Let's go to Mo. Mo. Kirsten clocked in at 56.7 seconds. So that puts Richard in first place, David in second place, and Kirsten in third place. So, folks, Richard right here. Quick start was extremely important to get the confidence up and set the fast pace. He had to beat David's time and get a time fast enough that Kirsten would be intimidated as she stepped up to her first swing right there and Richard made it through the thumbs up from all of our players we got more events coming up but right now let's go to our leaderboard Mo. well Richard is in the lead with 700 points in second place is David with 600 points in third place Kirsten with 500 points and once again it's time for spill your guts hi I'm super K Romeo I love to play softball and I'm an all-star third baseman and I love to play basketball and hang with my friends Our next event, Slam and Jam, and that's right, folks. We're going to put an elastic cord on our players' back, and they're going to dunk like Shaq. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. At the sound of my whistle, each player will have 30 seconds to try and slam dunk as many basketballs as possible. The player who scores the most wins. Players, on your mark, get set. Okay, so David's up first. We'll see what he can do, and he's completely faking out our players right there with a the head fake. He just goes straight up to the hoop right there, and you see how important timing is in this event. He just waited for other players to jump off the bridge, fakes them out, and then goes up to the hoop. And that time, good determination as he goes right to the hoop and puts another one in. So right now he has two. With time running out, he's got great form right there. That was Kirsten knocking that third one out right here. But he goes up to the hoop. That looks like three. And so with time running out, right, that last one will not count. So. The most important one, of course, the first one, all three of them counted. Let's see if that's official, Mo. Yes, Mike, David scored three baskets. All right, so David really using the timing effect in this one. On your mark, get set. All right, so Richard goes into this event. He's our leader right here as he goes up. And a nice little swish finger roll right there. But Richard's having trouble getting back up to the aerial bridge. He goes back down for another one and up another finger roll right in. He's just slowly just dumping them right into the hoop but getting back up to the bridge he can tie the score right now he has 10 seconds left to tie the score another finger roll that's another three for him and so hustling back will he have one more so shooting from the top of the bridge at the buzzer let's go to mo and find out the results mo richard also scored three baskets all right so richard had the quick hands in this event this guy just had the ability to completely just finger roll the ball right up into the hoop. We'll see what Kirsten can do. On your mark, get set. So if Kirsten can get four hoops in this event, folks, she will take it all and 300 points. She misses her first one, though, but she's back up to the bridge in good form as she got another basketball in her hands. Completely faked out the guys on that one, and she scores one. She's got 15 seconds to take the lead with three more scores. She goes up and puts that one through. That's two. She has 10 seconds to tie the score. Here's a very important up block right there. That was big time. She has three seconds to get it. Oh, and fumbles the ball at the end right there. So starting off very strong right there was Kirsten. Let's go to Mo and get the results. Mo. Kirsten scored two baskets. So that ties Richard and David in first place. Kirsten is in third place. Take a look at the replay right here. This is our man setting the pace right here. That was David going strong to the hoop, putting it right down, determined, fearless. This guy made it happen. Let's go to Mo and check out our leaderboard. Mo. Richard is in the lead with 1,000 points. In second place is David with 900 points. In third place, Kirsten with 600 points. Thanks for hanging with us.
for the wild card here on Games of Sports. Today we're playing us against them. Two out of the four rounds are done. The scores look like this. The girls have 50 points. The guys have 80 points. And now we are ready to bust out round three. Track and field style. Standing long jump. Now the girls are track and field stars, so this could be 50 points for them. But the guys, they want to see what they can do about it. Here's how this one's going to work. Pretty easy game. All three members of each team, they're just going to jump pretty much as far as they can. And wherever they land, that's how many points they're going to get. We're going to add up the total points from the three players. Whichever team of three gets more points gets 50 points for the whole round. All right, guys are going first. Ladies, take a step back. Hang on back there and watch the guys do some scouting. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right, whenever you're ready, go for it. Woo! Lane got 15 points for the guys. Here's Mike. Uh, 15 more, that's 30. Jason, uh, yeah, right on the line, 15 more. 15, 15, 15, that is 45 points. That's pretty good. All right, guys, come on in. Come on in, everybody, come on in. 45 points for the guys. The girls haven't gone yet. They're going to go in a few minutes. Okay. I think you got to feel pretty good about that, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all happy about the way you were oh, going? Yeah. Before? Now, you, before you, you were, you thought you were going to embarrass yourself. You didn't even want anyone to watch, but you got 15 points. That's awesome. Yeah. Look at that look of awesomeness on his face. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh. that's wow. Awesome. A look of awe right there. All right. So 45 points. We're going to see what the girls get when they go next. Now, time for more guts. Welcome back. Let's check out our leaderboard. Mo. After four events, Richard in red is in the lead with 1,000 points. In second place, David in blue with 900 points. In third place, Kirsten in purple with 600 points. Well, the competition has been hot so far, folks. Now it's about to get even hotter. In fact, the competition here on Guts is so hot, our crag has taken on a new molten color. Now it's mega, mega large, mega sharp, and mega challenging. From its very core, the shard zone has erupted into a tangled mass of petrified lava. And now as our players climb to the top, they will encounter Stone Ledge, a horizontal rock climb. Also, as they climb, they will trigger obstacles like snowstorms, floods, and nuclear flying crystals. I hope our players are ready for the sound of a dormant volcano ready to blow. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. Players will start at the sound of my whistle. Each player has an identical side of the mountain to climb and may not cross into another player's path. Now, during their climb, our players must light up each of eight targets located on their side of the crag. The first player to activate all of the targets, including the final one at the peak of the crag, will receive first place points. Mike. All right, folks, well, the points here in this event they have skyrocketed. Third place being worth 375 points. Second place, 550. And first place, 725 points. The Guts Gold, a piece of our glowing, awesome, radical rock on the line. Kick it off, Mo. Players, on your mark, get set. And so with that whistle, they begin the climb. As you know, up Boulder Canyon right there. That's David, he has 900 points. That's Richard, he has 1,000 points going up the crash. In purple, we have Kirsten. That's her fighting through the smoke and snow. As you see, Richard getting into the shard zone. That's David getting actuator after actuator. But it looks like now that Kirsten is in the lead. Kirsten at the shard zone. David, Richard trying to fight his way through. But that's Kirsten. Kirsten's in the lead right now, folks. If she can hustle her way up Stone Ledge, she will get to the top of our crag first. And right there, Richard in red having trouble. It looks like Kirsten, if she can power her way over Stone Ledge, will get to the top of our biggest challenge first. And indeed she does. Yes, the speed and strength of Kirsten. It's going to be for the gold right here between red and blue. Red or blue. It looks like red. Red. Richard. Kirsten at the top first. Let's go to Mo for the results. Mo. In first place on the mega crack, Kirsten in purple. In second place, Richard in red. In third place, David in blue. All right, folks, just showing how great a competition it has been here today. You see the nuclear flying crystals dropping right on Richard as he, he tries to fight through that smoke and snow and hustle his way up this crag, our biggest challenge here on Guts. Right here, all three of our players are at the shard zone, and you can see them trying to find the actuators right there. Missing one of the actuators, our players tried to fight their way over the shard zone, and at the top, stone ledge, seeing 
the fog from the clouds right there. That was Kirsten. She locked in with first place points, 725 points for her. And then the fight for the second place finish up the crag right there happened to be the guts gold on the line. Let's go to Mo and check out our final leaderboard. Mo. In third place today, David and Blue is 1,275 points. In second place, Kirsten and Purple, 1,325 points. Our winner today, Richard and Red, 1,550 points. And so the bronze medal will go to David, our blue player. The silver will go to Kirsten in purple. Kirsten in purple with a phenomenal performance up the crag. The bronze will go to David in blue. And the gold will go to Richard in red. We'll give him a glowing piece of our awesome rock. He'll take it home to show everyone he knows. No ifs, ands, or buts. These kids got guts. We'll see you next time. I'm Mike O'Malley. Do you have it? recorded in front of a live audience at Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando at Universal Studios, Florida. Nickelodeon Games and Sports for Kids is brought to you in part by America's dairy farmers and milk processors who ask, got milk? Summer is upon us and that can only mean one thing, Nick Gas is back at camp. So while the gas crew is fending off bugs and poison ivy, you guys keep it right here on Nickelodeon Gas. Ten up! First things first, where is my megaphone? Thank you very much. All right, ladies, I know you're pretty, but can you camp? And if you can camp, can you try to keep this place clean? Candy wrappers on the ground, your pillowcases everywhere, hair brushes, <laughs> stuff with hair. None of that. Now I'll be back here in 20 minutes, and I want this place clean. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. All right. That is, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Nickelodeon Guts has stopped. It is over. The action right here has not stopped. It is not over. We are still going. We have more of us against them. We are into our third round. The guys already went. They got 45 points. Fantastic. We'll see how the girls can do. Let's play the second half of round three. Now, before the ladies jump, we're going to go over here because we have a special guest. I would call her a celebrity. We have Coach Carla here. Coach is actually the ladies' coach. You're the track and field coach for the girls' team over there. Yes, Are you I proud sure of them so far? Absolutely fabulous job. All right, now they got to jump pretty far because uh -huh. the guys did a good job. Do you right. have any advice you want to give the girls? Girls, you just keep bending your legs, block with your arms, and extend. The key is up and out, okay? Up and out, girls. Yeah. Up and out. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, who's going first? Okay, LaShonda is going first. Remember, the guys had three jumps. They each got 15 points. That was 45 points. We'll see if the girls can beat it. Whenever you're ready. 15. Almost 20, but 15. All right. Here's Alicia. Oh, that's 10. 10. That's 25. And 35. All right, they got 35 points. Everybody, come on in. The girls did a great job. 35 points is an excellent score, but the guys, 45 points. So that's going to be a victory for them. And that's going to actually give them 50 points for that whole round. So now they're looking good because they have 130 points. The girls have 50 points. We still do have one more round, ladies. Come on, we got to smile because we got one more round. We got trivia, and there's a ton of points at stake. So you can still come back and win, all right? One of Crazy Kids is coming up. And then when we come back, we're going to get ready for round four. We have the red team. All right, red team. Yeah. The yellow team. Yeah. And the blue team. Yeah. Who 
be starting the day off with demonstrations by Donnie. Now, he'll first be showing us the traditional style of discus throwing. Donnie? Hit the deck! Ah! Uh, sorry. What's the next demonstration? It's the hammer throw. <laughs> Welcome to Wild and Crazy Kids. The show that goes anywhere and does anything to find kids having fun. With your hosts, Jessica Gaines, Omar Gooding, and Donnie Jeffco. Events like the javelin and the discus have been around for thousands of years. So we figured, hey, it's about time someone made them a little more exciting. We're gonna throw Nerf javelins, Eva shaving cream discus, and her water balloon hammers in a wild and crazy triple top. I still can't believe someone didn't think of it sooner. <laughs> How many times have you overslept and then tried to get dressed in time to catch the bus? I'm hurt! Well, if you're always racing to get dressed, you're going to be perfect for our Get Dressed Relay. This is one event you don't want to be late for. I think the long jump is one of the most exciting track and field events. But I hate getting all that itchy sand in my shoe. That's why we came up with our version of the long jump. Kids will come sprinting down this runway, bounce off this trampoline, and take a flying leap into these pools filled with mud, shaving cream, and water. The farther the leap, the higher the points. And here are our long jumpers. Yeah! Now, each one of you guys will get one jump, and the longest jump for each team will count. Ready? Yeah! yeah! All right, well, let's get you guys jumping. First up is Doug for the blue team. He heads down the runway and does a flying belly flop into the mud. Not a bad jump. The rep comes in to mark his distance. Check this out. He gets a pretty good bounce off that trampoline, but he just doesn't get a heck of a lot of height, and he lands right in the second pool of mud. Next up is Michelle for the red team. Here she goes. There's the bounce. Pretty good distance. Take a look. She gets a good bounce off that trampoline and gets even more distance by bending those knees so her feet don't touch. Nice technique, Michelle. Now we have Matt for the yellow team. A fast run down the runway. Oh, a face plant into the mud. It looked like Matt didn't get enough height on that bounce, and that stopped him short of the third pool. Let's take another look at it and see what went wrong. His speed is good on the approach, but he doesn't get high enough on that bounce. He tries to stretch out the jump, but it's just too late. Here's Toby for the blue team. He charges down the runway. Good bounce. Oh, head first into the mud. Let's take a slow-mo look at Toby's dive. He gets a good bounce, but he lifts his feet up and starts to take a nose dive. Okay, that was still some pretty impressive distance, Toby. Joe has a determined look on his face. There he goes. Ouch! That was an interesting technique. And it landed Joe just on the edge of the second puddle. What do you say we take a second look at that? He looks good on his approach to the trampoline, but he spreads his legs on the takeoff, and that causes him to lose his balance and some distance on the jump. Next up is Shelly for the yellow team. Strong bounce! Oh! A face full of shaving cream. She gets a good, strong bounce here and tries to bring that leg up to get some extra power. Here's Eric for the blue team. Terrific bounce! Look at that distance! Right into the shaving cream. He gets a tremendous bounce off the trampoline and flies into those pools of shaving cream. Great jump, Eric. Okay, here's Ben for the red team. Nice start. Good jump. Oh, into the third pool. Ben hits that trampoline with all his weight and sails through the air, landing right in the center of the third pool. That's a good look for you, Ben. Now it's up to Eric for the yellow team. Another long jump. It looks like it might be a tie. Eric looks happy with his jump, but see it again. Look at the height he gets on this bounce. 
He stretches his whole body to get the maximum distance and crashes into that pool of shaving cream. All right, good job, guys. Yeah. Now, we have a tie between the yellow team and the blue team for first place. Now, the blue team's my team. So now we're going to have a jump off between Eric and Eric. The blue team's Eric steps up onto the platform. And there he goes. Oh! Not quite as good as his first jump. Let's take another look at that. He gets a really great jump before the trampoline, but as he leaves it, he flattens out his body and cuts down his distance. Then he slams into the third pool and slides across the mat. Let's see if Eric from the yellow team can beat him. Here he goes. Another good jump, but maybe not good enough. Eric's face is so covered with shaving cream, he has no idea how he made out. Let's go to the slow motion replay and take another look at his jump. There's the approach, the bounce, and the jump, but he just doesn't seem to have the power he had on his first jump. Oh! Yeah! Oh, all right, terrific jumping, guys. Now, here are the scores after the long jump event. The red team is in third place with 50 points. Yellow's in second with 100, and Blue's taking the lead with 150 points. Stick around, our triple toss field events are coming up. And don't be surprised if you see these games in the next Olympics. Don't worry about your wardrobe. You can pick it out on your way to the finish line in our Get Dressed Relay. Well, the blue team is in the lead on Wild and Crazy Kids. But right here in the garage, the blue team is not quite in the lead. But we'll see if they got enough magic left in them to pull off a fourth round miracle comeback. We are playing us against them. The us team is the girls track and field team. The them team is the guys lacrosse team. And we have made it through three out of the four rounds. And you see the scores. And right now, it's good to be a guy because the guys have the lead by the score of 130 to 50. But we still do have one more round left to come. That's going to be a lightning fast trivia round. Girls, it would be miraculous, but it is possible. It is possible. You got to believe that you can come back. We'll see if it can happen. We're a lot of crazy kids, and then we're back to play round four. I know. I know you've got a relay race to get to, and you just can't decide what to wear. Hey, don't sweat it. We've got your wardrobe all picked out for you in our Get Dressed Relay. These relay runners have to race to their partners and help them get dressed. But that's not all. They also have to attach their partner's leg to their own before running to the next one. The first team to dress all four teammates and get the human chain across the finish line wins. And here are our relay teams. Omar's on the red team. All right! Yeah, yeah, all right. Donnie's on the blue team. All right, blue team! Yeah! And I'm on the yellow team! Yeah! All right, guys, remember, you have to be dressed and attached when you reach the finish line. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, let's get you guys into position. All right. All right. Here are the first racers in the relay. They're waiting for the gun to go off. And they're off. Blue and red start off by putting on their pants, but yellow starts off with the jacket first. Red looks like she's in the lead right now, but they still have a long way to go in this race. Blue puts on his jacket while yellow works on her pants. Blue's having a small problem with his jacket. And now Red is ready to put on her swim fins. But so is Yellow. Blue's still wrestling with that jacket. And Red takes off. Blue's almost ready. And there's the Red tag. Here comes Yellow. Red's still in the lead. Blue's working on that hat. Now Blue's working on his fins. And here he comes. He's really moving. Whoa. Whoops. Come on, Blue, you're almost there. You can do it. It looks like Blue is having some problems keeping his pants up. Pull him up! Come on, pull him up! Come on, tie it up! Yeah, he made it! Come on! All right! 
Stick it through. All right, tight. One little notch. There it is. Perfect. Oh, you don't need to hold. Just go. Go. Time it right. Time it. Go, you guys. Go. 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 Go, red team. Go on, red team. It looks like the red team is still in the lead. All right, red. But we're right behind them. Come on, red team. Oh, oh the red team takes a spill. They pick up their hats and try to get to their feet. Yellow's moving, but not too fast. And Blue's just taking off. Red's still trying to get up. Blue's just getting the hang of it. Blue's catching up. Yellow needs a little work. We may not be fast, but we're getting there. Yellow stops to make some adjustments. So does Red. Come on, Yellow, get those fins moving. Only a little more to go. Red tumbles across the line, and now their third racer will get dressed and join the chain. Blue comes in for the tag, and Yellow is right behind them. Come on, Yellow team, you're almost there. Only two more steps. Just about tied right now. They're racing to get their third runner dress. And Yellow's just about to make the tag. There! That's the third number, Red. Going for the hat. Okay. All they need now is to tie that second belt. We've got it. Oh, okay. Put on the fins. Come on, Red team. You almost got your fins on. Red's in the lead, but Blue and Yellow are just about ready to get their fins on and go. Come on, Red. All right. Blue's trying to get attached right now. And now so is Yellow. Hurry up, guys. Red's already moving down the track. Hey, but they're crawling. Can they do that? Well, the judge says yes, so I guess it's allowed. Come on, Red. Okay, crawl. You don't have to walk. Crawl. Come on, Red. Crawl it. And Red's really become experts at this. Blue's still getting attached. Donnie's getting anxious. And here comes Red. But Yellow's right behind them. They're closing in. Look at Omar go. Here comes Donnie's team. Uh-oh, Red's almost ready to go. Blue's coming in for the tag. You can tell Donnie's late for school a lot. He's a fast dresser. Omar's getting attached. We'd better hurry up. Blue's almost ready, too. You guys got it? All right, come on. All right, come on. Oh, no. There goes Red headed for the finish line. Come on, go! And Donnie's almost ready, too. Donnie's attached. Omar's almost at the finish. Here goes Donnie. Omar's out in front, but they're falling apart. But Donnie's team loses their hats. Red's looking good. Now we're ready to go. Darn, Omar's team finishes first. And it looks like Blue's got second place locked down, but not without some real problems. They've got to get their entire team across the finish line to finish. They haven't done it yet. They forgot a hat. a second. And here comes the rest of the yellow team. Okay, great job, guys. Here are the results. The yellow team scored 100 points. Yeah! <laughs> for third place, but the blue team got 150 points for second place.
Going for distance is easy. Now let's see if you can hit some. A wild and crazy triple toss is next. So who knew it would be so hard on wild and crazy kids? I didn't know. What I do know is that we're going to have a hard fourth round coming up right now. Us against them. It's our cross sport, cross age, cross gender, cross everything competition. Two teams from totally different sports on the same playing field. All right, so we've made it through three rounds. The crowd is here. They're ready to do some more cheering. Before we get to that fourth and final round, let's show you the scores again. The girls have 50 points. The guys have 130 points. If the guys can hang on and win the game, they're all going to get this prize package right here. Today's teams are competing for movie tickets for you and a friend to Regal Cinemas, admission to Wet n Wild, day passes to a Gui Rock Climbing Center, and a games and sports gift package. Okay, so is it going to be the guys or is it going to be the girls in a great comeback? Let's find out by playing round four. 60 seconds on the clock. Trivia questions. Each time you get it right, you get 10 points. Each of these questions is multiple choice. You buzz them when you know it. You can answer it. If you get it right, like I said, 10 points. If you get it wrong, the other team can steal it. And if they get it right, that's going to be 10 points for them. And all these questions are about rules for track and field and lacrosse. Everybody ready? 60 sure. seconds on the clock. Here's your first one. Buzz in when you got it. In track, running before the starting gun is called what? Girls. Jumping the gun. Jumping the gun. False start. We'll accept it. We will accept it. Yes, that's right. That's going to be 10 points for them. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Guys, switch them up. If an official tells the lacrosse team to keep it in, what are they asking them to do? Is it A, stop stalling, B, leave the field, or C, play overtime? You can just try it and you can guess if you want to. Girls. A. You got it. Good job. Next question. In a 4x400 four meter relay, what is the total distance run? Is it A, 1,200 meters, B, 400 meters, C, 1,600 meters, A, B, or C? Guys. C. Yes, correct. Number four. In lacrosse, how many players are on the field at once? Total players in lacrosse. Is it A, 10, B, 15, C, 20? Girls. B. Incorrect. Guys, A or C? That's um, C. Yes, it is. C. Good. Next one. A competition which features seven events is called what? A, a triathlon, B, a heptathlon, C, a decathlon, A, B, or C? Girls. B. Yes, good. Next one. Time is up. That's it. Time is up. We made it through five questions, and the audience is going to go wild right now. It was a great game. All right. Hard fought battle. The us team, they got 30 points. The them team got 20 points. So the final score, the ladies 80 points, the guys 150 points, and the guys have won the championship. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Now we're going to see the grand prize package that they're all going to go home with. Here it is. Congratulations. You just won the Regal Cinema movie tickets, Wet n Wild admission, day passes to a Glee Rock Climbing Center, and a gas gift package. But ladies... It's okay. You're not going home empty-handed. You're also going to get some prizes, too. Here you go. Take a look at what the girls are going to get. You're not leaving the garage empty-handed. You're taking home movie tickets for you and a friend to Regal Cinema and a games and sports gift package. All right. That's it. Another successful us against them in the books. Good luck on the track and field season. Good luck on the lacrosse playing fields. More wild and crazy kids coming up next. Javelin throwing action. you got to stick around for it. When was the last time you tuned in to watch javelin, discus, or hammer throwing on TV? That's what I thought. Well, let's face it, it's, well, no offense, but it's boring. Until today, that is. We've taken those field events, mixed them with a little shaving cream, some water balloons, and a few brake parents, and come up with our wild and crazy triple toss field events. Hey. And here are our athletes, all right. <laughs> the first event is the Nerf javelin throw. We'll throw these foam javelins into this field of balloons and pop them for points. Now, the farther the balloon, the higher the point. Next is the discus throw, where we'll cover a floppy discus with shaving cream and fling it for distance. But to score points, the discus has to be caught by one of these moms. And the final event is the hammer throw. Players will spin around and toss these water balloon hammers as far as they can. The farther the hammer sails, the higher the point. But again, to score points, the water balloon hammer has to hit a parent. Now, each player competing in an event will get two throws, so let's get started. All right, let's go. First up in the competition is David for the blue team. He throws that javelin and nails a yellow balloon. That's 25 points. Now for his second throw. 
A long throw! Oh, but it doesn't hit anything. Let's take another look at that first throw. He keeps the throw low and straight, and that scores him a hit in the front row. Here's Marianne in the discus throw. There it goes, and it's caught. Nice snag, Mom. That's 200 points. Here goes her second discus throw. High one, and it's caught by the same mom. That's another 200 points. Let's see that again. She winds up and flings that discus way back there. Then mom makes the last minute grab and scores 200 points for the blue team. Last up for the blue team is Doug with the hammer throw. There goes the wind up. It flies all the way back, and it's caught for 400 points. Nice catch, Mom. Here goes Doug with his second throw. He starts his wind up and lets it fly. It's caught and popped for another 450 points. Let's see that in slow motion. Doug gets a big wind up going here, then lets it go at the top of his arm. It sails way to the back line, and Mom catches it. But it's got to pop the count, so you know what to do, Mom. Yeah! <laughs> a blue team scored a total of 1,275 points. Now let's see what the red team out with a short, powerful swing and lets that hammer fly. It heads deep into the field, then it's caught by this mom right in front of her face. Splat! The red team scored a total of 975 points in the triple toss. Now it's up to the yellow team. First up is Eric throwing the javelin. First throw, long one. Hey. He nails a red balloon. That's 75 points. Great throw, Eric. Here's Eric's second attempt. Not quite as far. Oh, nothing. Let's see Eric's first throw. And he gets some real distance. It heads all the way towards the back and pops a red balloon in the second to last row. Here's Valerie throwing the discus. She flings the line dry. And it's caught by a brave mom. Nice throw, Valerie. 300 points. Here goes Valerie's second attempt. Another strong throw and a near miss. So close. Nice try, mom. Here's Valerie's first throw. A lot of risk in that toss. It heads right for one of the moms. She doesn't have any choice. She has to catch it. Last up in the hammer throw is Roxanne. She gives a full swing and lets it go. Oh, yeah. Mom hung on to the net, so that's 350 points. Great job. Roxanne takes a second to study the field. Then she starts her swing. Another catch. Check out this first throw. It's a low screamer right towards one of the moms. She has to reach forward to get to it, and she just gets a hold of part of the balloon, and she makes the grab. All right, now the yellow team scored 975 points for the triple toss. And now it's time for the grand total of the first annual Wild and Crazy Kids track and field meet. All right, you guys, bring it in. Yeah. Okay. Now the yellow team scored an amazing 1,175 points for third place. Way to go, you guys. And the red team scored 1,225 points. Second place. Yeah. And our winners, the blue team scored 1,575. Good job, you guys. Great game. All right, now the first one to cross the finish line and break the ribbon win. Got and don't get in my way, Donnie. How can I get in your way if you're going to be 20 yards behind me? Yeah, right. We'll see. OK, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Set? Yep. Yeah. Go!
All right, campers, get back in camp. So while the game...